Welcome. God bless you. It is good to be with you. This is the seventh message in our series on the importance of the Bible. I took a few moments and looked up the word importance. I wanted to get a definition for it. And uh, the, it wasn't the, the dictionary. I couldn't find really a workable definition. So I went to the thesaurus and I found some synonyms which were very helpful to me. Let me give you just a few. Um, value, significance. When something's important, it's relevant essentialness. I liked that. Like, air is essential to life. I won't be able to do this entire message, these few moments we have together. with. I can't do it on one breath. I'm going to have to have air to make it through this. Another synonym was worth. And I thought about a person that might be out in the desert for days, three days or some, no water, blistering sun. And he would give everything he had of worth just for a simple glass of water, just for the Bible is like that. It's giving up all you have to see the value of it. It's worth more than anything. Seriousness. Consequence. I had this verse come to mind. Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. Maybe I'll even read 12. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of hunger, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even unto the east, and they shall run to and fro, and seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. God says, Amos is a prophet to the ten northern tribes. Toward the end of the ten northern tribes, they're going to be scattered all over the place, and they're going to be repopulated, that part of the world, that part of Israel, with people from other countries to try to destroy their religion, try to destroy their language, try to destroy their culture. And God says, okay, if you will not hear my words, then I will withhold them from you. It's, it's kind of a terrifying thought that God would say that, but when sin keeps going on and people keep disobeying the word of the Lord, God says, okay, you'll want to hear it now but I'm going to send a famine and you won't hear. So we live in a time where we can at least still hear the words of the Lord. Many parts of the world cannot, but we can. I think it's uh, get away from the word of God. And I think what happens is we get away from God. I know that's true in my own life. When I find myself getting away from the word of God, I find myself drifting away from the God of the word. Well, the purpose of this series, I just want to say it again, it's the number one, strengthen the confidence in the Bible that people who already know these things, are already established in this truth, they have a daily time in the Word, or they, they love to hear the preaching of the Word of God. Just to stay at it. The second, number two, would be to encourage those to get started or to return. So maybe get away from their time with the Lord and His Word. And they need to get back to the habit, establishing a good habit of being in the Word of God. And last of all, those that are on the outside looking in, if you, they were to say, have this said to them, if God had something to say to me, wouldn't I want to hear it? Well, this is the main way God speaks to us is through his word. This is his spoken word to us. And uh, to try to encourage people, take a look. Pray. Just, just before you read your Bible, just say, God, you got something to say to me? I want to hear it. To encourage me. Oh, the Bible is so important. Well, we've been using Acts chapter 2. Verse 22 is a launching pad for the last two messages, and now this one. And um, let me quote it for you. It says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. We took a look at signs. Sign is an indicator of a supernatural event. God took the natural birth. All of us had a mommy and a daddy. Union took place. He took a natural birth, and yet a supernatural sign was given. God himself said, oh, Behold, I'll give you a sign. And it was a supernatural birth because the woman was a virgin. That's, that's not possible. Yes, it is. With God, all things are possible. And Jesus was born of a virgin. That was the sign. And then it said, signs, excuse me, miracles, wonders, and signs. We took a look at last time, a wonder, the wonders of Egypt. 
a wonder, frogs, there were frogs in Egypt before this, but when Moses said God is going to send frogs, it became a wonder to the people of, Israel, of Egypt. A, a wonder is something that arrests our attention by grandeur, inexplicableness, astonishment. I mean, there were lice in Egypt, but not like the lice that caused the people to wonder when Moses spoke and said, you're going to have lice. Flies. There were flies in Egypt, but nothing like the flies that came. They couldn't even breathe. They couldn't hold their... They were just horrible. Locusts. There were locusts in Egypt, but nothing like the locusts said God summoned the locusts and they came and devoured Egypt. They had hailstones, hailstorms in Egypt, but nothing like the wonder of God sending hailstones the size of them, the destruction that they did, the grandeur, that's what a wonder is. Last of all, in this message, we're going to take a look at miracles. A miracle is something that demonstrates almighty power, no power greater. The almighty, Jesus, God is called the almighty. It's because of the almighty power of God. There's a natural power in a storm. Jesus calmed the storm. But just try to imagine, because we weren't there in the boat on Galilee when the storm arose, and they had storms on Galilee before, but not a storm like this. And Jesus is going to speak peace to it, and it's going to be an instant calm, so that the disciples were more afraid of the calm than they were of the storm. And they said, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the waves obey him? Imagine this. You're watching the Weather Channel, you know a Category 5 hurricane is coming toward the Gulf Coast. They see it on there, it's perfectly the eye, we've all watched those things. And instantly the thing disappears from radar, Category 5. I mean, within an hour or two of hitting the coast. And I'll guarantee you, if that were to occur, everyone would be saying, what happened? Can you imagine them giving the explanation? Well, some guy standing on the beach said, be still. And it disappeared. No way. Jesus is God having almighty power. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Almighty power. When Jesus walked on water, he demonstrated a miracle. And there's been those who tried to explain away the miracle, saying, well, he did this with some kind of a sleight of hand or quick. No, he walked on water, which was demonstrating a power greater than the law of heavier objects sink. Lighter ones float. He was heavier. We don't walk on water. When he fed the multitude with five loaves and two fishes, 5,000 men besides women and children, that is an almighty power of taking something and demonstrating or exercising a greater power. When he raised uh, Lazarus from the dead, he exercised a greater power. Well, now is what I want to share in these closing moments here is my favorite miracle. I want to mention my second favorite one because it's akin to the, my favorite miracle. And my second favorite miracle is Peter's release from prison. The prison couldn't hold him. When God sent an angel to come wake him up, he's sleeping, he's in He's in manacles, feet and hands, they fall off. And he says, I get up and come on, follow it. The door's open. He walks past the guards. They're looking at him, do nothing. He walks out. He doesn't even know himself if it's, if it's real or if it's just a dream or what it is until he gets outside and smells the fresh air, indicating the prison had a very foul odor to it. You get accustomed to. But when he got out and then he realized the angel disappeared, that God had miraculously freed him from prison. Well, my favorite miracle is this. It's found in Acts. We read Acts 2.22. I want to read Acts 2.24. This is Peter preaching. It's a Holy Spirit anointed sermon, and he's preaching this. And in verse 24, he says this in his exposition of telling that Jesus is risen from the dead. Listen to what he says in verse 24. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. 
the pains of death hold us. They could not hold because he's going to exercise a greater power, an almighty power, like speaking to the storm and calming it. The thing disappears off radar. At the funeral, there was a funeral procession going on, and a woman was mourning over her only son, and she's a widow, and he's dead. And Jesus stopped the procession, said to the boy, who was dead? Arise. And he came back to life, and he said, now go back to your mother. He has a greater power. He exercises. It was not possible that death should be able to hold him prisoner. It holds us. People die, they stay dead. But not Jesus. I want to read this account, which I just love this scene. Jesus said, I'm going to be crucified. I tried to explain this to his disciples, but they just couldn't embrace it in its magnitude. And he says this, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 6. And at the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Try to imagine this. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake became as dead men they passed out for fear that's unbelievable fear and the angel answered and said unto the women fear not for i know that you seek jesus whom was crucified he was killed he is not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the lord lay and they looked into the tomb and saw the empty tomb jesus rose from the dead because he had a greater power it was a miracle can I tell you something at the coming of the Lord? I don't know if I want to put the coming of the Lord in the category of a miracle or not because of this miracle which says he's coming back. He is alive and he is coming back. Let me quote this for you if I can. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them who are asleep, euphemism for death, that you sorrow not, even as, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also who sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive remain under the coming of the Lord shall not precede them who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first greater power than that of death is the resurrected Lord in his life. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The last enemy that's going to be destroyed will be death. It has been destroyed in our Savior, Jesus Christ, so we can look at death and not have a fear of it of the resurrection power of Christ over death. Well, our next session, I have two more I want to do. Our next session is everything passes away except, everything passes away except. I hope you join us for that. I hope you pass it on to some people, friends of yours. I think these messages are needful and uh, I think they help establish us in our faith. Well, until then, holding fast to the word of life, that we may rejoice in the day of Christ, that we've not run in vain, neither labored in vain. God bless you.